In this video, we've got me accidentally breaking boilers. We've got other engineers breaking boilers by putting the wrong PCB plugs in the wrong place. We've got repairs on some old Worcesters that I've never worked on before. We've got some tricks and tips on taking parts out quicker and easier. And we've got a few other tricks and tips I think you might find useful. So this is just going to be another episode of Daily Life of a Gas Engineer. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So for this first repair, we're working on our old Worcester and the customer said that the heating works but the hot water doesn't work at all. So let's create a demand for this boiler and let's see what's going on. So right now it's saying we've got a flame, it's in low flame right now. So we'll give it a few seconds to go into high flame and see what happens. and it pretty much cuts off straight away so for some reason this isn't rectifying properly so if we flick open our gas bag when we go to section 6 common boiler issues and what to do so on the top left of the screen i've attached a little screenshot of what's inside section 6 and you can see there's four reasons we may be having an issue with this flame so the second reason is we may not be getting enough gas so the book will tell you to connect your U-gauge through the gas valve and see what happens when you try to call a demand and you can see just on low flame we're only getting about 8 millibar which is way too little so when we go to high flame now the boiler is getting nowhere near enough gas to sustain this high flame and as a result the boiler cuts off so now we're going to go to the gas meter and do some checks but as soon as I get there I can see what the problem is straight away. The ECV has been knocked over by some shoes and 75% sharp which is a very common thing. People shove all types of things in these type of cupboards, ironing boards, shoes, bags so it happens the ECV gets knocked and then the boiler doesn't get enough gas. So now that we've opened that all the way let's see if there's a difference. So on low flame we're getting roughly about 20.5 millibar and when it shoots up to high flame we're then getting around 18.5 so massive difference. Now I'm just going to stay a little bit longer make sure the hot water works properly, all the radiators get hot, do all of my safety checks but if everything's all good that's this job sorted. Okay so I'll admit for this repair I was a bit confused to what was going on. So I'm getting CON on the board and the customer said an engineer came before me and he changed the fan and he changed the board because they was having issues with the boiler. He done both of that and the boiler still wasn't working so he put the old board back in and yeah, I don't know, it was just I don't know what happened, it was just all a bit of a mess. But when I've opened this up, I can see it is an absolute mess. There's things in the wrong place there's cables disconnected so I don't know what's happened so from here I'm just going to put everything back in the right place and see if the boiler works and just take it from there so let's swap these two back over and then we can get the boiler on We've got rid of the CON, so that's a good first sign. Let's run the tap, get demand, and see what happens. Okay, so at this point, the boil is fired up. It seems to be working. I'm just going to give everything a once over, do my safety checks. But one thing I realized is when I've opened up the panel again just to check everything, the earth cable for the electrodes isn't connected to anything. So if I follow the cable back up, I can clearly see it's for the electrodes, follow it back down, and I'm trying to see where it goes, but I can't find the connection for it. And then I check a PCB in my van, and I can see that a connection for it has been snapped off. So again, I have no idea what's going on with this job. So I'm gonna put a new PCB in and just take it from there. So just to show you on this board, you can see that connection right there, so we'll throw this board in. So 
So at this point, I've just got these last two blocks to put in. Once I have done that, I've just got to put in the live neutral and earth and then the thermostat. I'm going to quickly get those put in and then we'll fire up the boiler. Okay, so we fired up for heating, so the thermostat and all of that side is working. Let's test the hot water next. And there you go, hot water is also working. So, no idea what happened. Um, PCB has been changed in the end because that connection was snapped off. I don't know if it needed a fan before, but all I know is the boiler is working right now, and that's the main thing. For this job, the customer called in saying that their heating keeps randomly coming on throughout the day. They have no idea why the thermostat is 100% switched off, but it just keeps coming on. So usually when this happens is because the diverter has failed. So when they're running the hot tap, whether they're washing dishes or taking a shower, that heat is also spread into the radiators. So a quick way I tested this is I ran the hot tap and I put my hand on the flow and it was getting hot. From there, I knew it was the diverter, so I'm gonna get that swapped over, but they've also asked me to service the boiler. So I'm not gonna show you me changing the diverter or doing the strip down service because I've already got videos of me doing that. What I do want to show you is where I went wrong. So as I'm doing the strip down service, I obviously need to remove all of the electrical connections from the fan and the gas valve. As I'm removing this cable here, I've somehow pulled off this entire section and for a second I panicked thinking, right, that's never happened before. But I thought, no worries, I'll just push it back on. But it wasn't going back on. There's no way to clip it back on or get it to stay. I spoke to a technical and they said, if that's ever come off, then that's it, you just have to replace the Venturi. So that's what I need to do now. But the good news is, these are really easy to replace. All you have to do is undo this front nut and remove the clip that I just did. And then this whole section just wiggles up and out. From there, the Venturi just rotates anti-clockwise, pulls out, and that's it. It's that simple to replace. The new Venturi didn't come with this yellow part, so I had to put the old one into the new one. That then just rotates clockwise back in. Next, you just put in the copper gas pipe back in, put in the clip and then just line up the pipe and do the nut. Now as you can imagine when I was putting this connection back on I made sure I was super careful because I didn't want that to happen again. I didn't even know that was a thing to be honest, I didn't know that could break off. But there you go, um, be careful when you're removing that, avoid what I've done, but that is this job all done. For this job, we're working on a glow worm and there's two issues the customer says they have. The first one is the boiler seems to leak whenever they run hot water and the second one, I'll let you listen for yourself. So the customer complains saying that the boiler is making a really loud banging noise and usually this is one or two things, it's either air or it's just sludge in the system. So the first thing I did is I went around the house and I tried to bleed the radiators but nothing was coming out. I checked the drain off on the boiler, no water was coming out. So I think this system is pretty much empty and the pressure gauge is just faulty. It's showing that there's over 1.5 pressure when really the system's empty. So what I'm doing is I'm topping some pressure up in the boiler and then I'm going to go around the house, bleed all the radiators and see if I can get this banging noise to stop. So I just finished bleeding all of the radiators, I fired up the boiler and it seems to be working all good. No more noise. So now we need to find where this leak is coming from. Now we've actually got some water in the system and we also need to change over the pressure sensor because that's what's faulty as well. Okay, so it leaked pretty much straight away. As soon as I ran the hot water tap, you can see the diverter is leaking. And when I shut the tap, the leak stops. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to drain down the system again and we're going to undo the screws holding the diverter in and it should just be as easy as pulling it out but just before we pull it out we're going to quickly charge the vessel tried pulling out of my hands it was not moving at all so I tried getting some grips on there and the grips didn't seem to work too well either for some reason this diverter is just super glued in so we're gonna have to try a different strategy so what i'm gonna try is i'm gonna get a flathead i'm just gonna try to pry this diverter out so stick it in twist it pull it and you can see it's working a little bit of water's coming out showing that it is slowly moving out but that clip there is getting in the way i realized so I'm going to have to rotate the diver up head section bit so it's not hitting that clip and then hopefully it will come out a lot easier. And there we go. So now we can remove the water pressure sensor. Really easy, just pull that clip towards you. Like so. And then it just lifts up. Now we're going to get some grease, pop in the new one. And then we can put in our new diverter as well. So at this point, water pressure sensor is sorted, the diverter should be sorted. Now it's time to fill up. Let's just make sure there's no leaks. Now it's going to bleed the system to make sure there's no air in the system so we don't get that horrible noise again. Run the hot tap to make sure the diverter is not leaking, but it's all good. So with this boiler repair, we've got a boiler that keeps cutting out. So what I noticed is the boiler seems to be fine if you left it on, but as soon as you call for a demand and the pump starts to spin, the boiler cuts off and it blows the fuse. So for some reason, there's water getting into the electrical section of the pump. Now, it took me a while to figure out where it was coming from, but there was a really, really small crack in the plastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain down the boiler and we're going to change over the whole pump, including the plastic body. So it's going to charge the vessel as always, pump out any excess water that's inside the vessel, and then we can get started with our repair. Now, if I'm changing the whole pump body on a valent, personally, I found the easiest way to do it is just to push that little metal tab back. It's a bit hard to see. But if you just get a flathead and you push that back, you then don't need to undo the screws underneath the boiler, which can be a bit tricky to get to because of the valves. As you'll see now, once you push that back, the pump does just pull forward. So now as I've taken the pump out, you can see where it's been leaking. 
So now that that's out, we can take this little right hand section with the pressure gauge out, put that into the new one, and we can put the new pump in. So the pump's now back in place, you can see the holes line up where the screw will go. So now we just need to put everything back together. And then we can just bend this back in place. At this point, everything's pretty much done. Just need to do the wiring. Now, compared to the old pump, there's one extra cable that we need to attach, which is this one here. And that's just gonna go on the top left section of the PCB. But that's it. All that's left now is to top up, make sure there's no leaks, do all of my safety checks before I go. But that's this repair done.